Hi, I'm Dr. David Desario, and this is the first video in the series for Math 5300 Number Theory. In this first video, I'd like to give an introduction to number theory, a brief history of the subject, and also discuss some of the topics that we'll, we will cover uh, this semester. Number theory is, is quite an old subject. It's arguably thousands of years old. But what is number theory? We can define it as the study of properties of natural numbers. These, these are the counting numbers that you probably were first taught when you were uh, a child, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Oftentimes, we include the natural numbers in a larger set called the integers. And you can also think of number theory as, as studying properties of integers, which also has zero and the negative natural numbers. The study of numbers and number theory really got its systematic kind of scientific basis over 2,000 years ago with the ancient Greeks. They uh, were the first ones to take a very scientific approach to studying the properties of integers. And it's quite amazing how much the Greeks knew about geometry and mathematics and number theory uh, thousands of years ago. And we will, we will study some of the, the same theorems that the ancient Greeks did uh, this semester. Around 600 BC, Pythagoras and his disciples were the first ones to classify the integers into certain categories, such as the even numbers, odd numbers, prime numbers, composite numbers. They talked about perfect numbers and things like this. They also connected integers to geometric figures. Ge geometry was was quite in fashion with the ancient Greeks and they uh, did a lot of things with geometric shapes. Undoubtedly you've you've heard of the Pythagorean theorem which still bears Pythagoras's name which talks about the sides of a, of a right triangle, their special relationship that the Greeks noticed where the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle equals the square of the hypotenuse. And so, for example, if we have a triangle with sides 3, 4, 5, then that is a right triangle. And the, the sides of those right triangles forms a set of three numbers, which we call Pythagorean triples. And actually, this fact was even known earlier than the ancient Greeks a Babylonian tablet has been found that dated to about 1700 BC, which contained quite a bit of Pythagorean triples. And uh, but we still think that the you know the Greeks were the first ones to really study all the types of of numbers that could could show up as Pythagorean triples, and they uh, they were the first ones to give a method for determining infinitely many Pythagorean triples. Another famous Greek that we will hear from later this semester is Euclid and around 300 BC Euclid compiled all the the known geometry works into a, a 13 set volume called Elements and this was probably the greatest mathematical work of the ancient times it's been studied for well over 2000 years and we'll still use some of the proofs that were presented in, in elements we'll, we'll actually see um, this semester. A lot of the stuff, a lot of the early work in number theory um, showed up in, in Euclid's elements. For the first time, Euclid actually gave uh, pr mathematical facts or theorems and rigorous proofs for those for those facts. He had proofs on the fact that there's infinitely number of prime numbers, some other theorems about perfect numbers that inspired later work in the in the 1700s. So many people think that Euclid didn't actually write all these theorems, but was a just did a great job collecting all all these works, all the theorems that that had been discovered for several hundred years of, of the ancient Greeks. After Euclid. In about 300 BC, no significant advances were made in number theory until about AD 250 when uh, Diophantus of Alexandria published another 13 volume set called Arithmetica. And he became the first Greek to use 
algebraic symbols extensively in his work. And in this, in this text, he uh, solves various types of equations. He solved equations involving two or three unknowns. And he sought for integer solutions to these equations. And we actually still study Diophantine equations, which are named after Diophantus. We will definitely talk about Diophantine equations this this semester and solving these equations with uh, in integer solutions. Well, during the during the Middle Ages, not much happened by the way of mathematics. In number theory, especially, there was nothing going on in Europe. In the Middle East, there were more people studying mathematics, and then really nothing happened by the way of number theory until Pierre de Fermat came on the scene in uh, the early 1600s. He's often called the father of modern number theory. He, he actually studied the works of Diophantus and kind of rediscovered all these topics in number theory and that kind of set him going to uh, continue, continue the work and, and further the work. And a lot of things that he discovered for the first time um, were deeper properties of integers. And he's kind of famous for, we'll, we'll talk about Fermat's little theorem and um, even, I mentioned you know, Fermat's last theorem. The kind of the story goes that um, in his copy of Arithmetica by Diophantus, he was studying these Diophantine equations and and made us made this statement of Fermat's last theorem and in the in the margin of the of his text he wrote I have a marvelous proof of this theorem but the margin is too small to contain it well this theorem was only proven in 1994 and um, using modern algebra and, and other advanced mathematics Andrew Wiles, who, who proved this theorem, is credited with proving Fermat's last theorem. His, his proof takes up over 150 pages, so it was kind of an interesting fact and interesting story in, uh, in number theory that this theorem, which Fermat never gave a proof of, actually kind of stumped mathematicians for, for over 300 years. After Fermat reignited number theory in, in Europe, there were several other very good mathematicians who were working in number theory during the 18th and 19th centuries. Some huge names like Euler, Lagrange, Legendre, Jacobi, and Dirichlet all made significant contributions to, to number theory. We'll actually hear most of these names this semester. But the next big, big player in, in modern number, th number theory was undoubtedly Carl Friedrich Gauss, who is often called the prince of mathematics because he's kind of regarded as the greatest mathematician that ever lived. There's uh, all kinds of anecdotes of, of how how smart he was and how clever he was. There are stories that you may, may have heard of when he was in primary school. He found a formula for adding up the first 100 integers as a teenager, he, he came up with some conjectures about number theory and it was actually conjectured the, the so-called prime number theorem even when he was in 15. And, and when he was 24, he actually published his what he considered to be his greatest work is Disquisitions Arithmetica, which transformed number theory into a systematic branch of mathematics he presented a lot of things that we will study this semester. For example, congruences were first the, the notation for congruences with three lines, uh, like an equal sign with three lines. He presented that first in his this work. We'll use that to a great extent this semester. But um, you know, Gauss is most people consider the greatest mathematician who ever lived. And one time I had a professor mention that. Uh, that Gauss and his father were the best father-son mathematician duo in history. And I said, I didn't know that Gauss's father was a mathematician. 
And my professor said, well, his father wasn't a mathematician, but Gauss is better than any two mathematicians put together. So that just kind of speaks to his reputation as a, as a great mathematician. Well, um, after Gauss and others, other names I mentioned, began to really study these difficult questions about the properties of numbers and, and things like the prime numbers, distributions of primes. There was a this this conjecture about the distribution of primes, which we, we, we now call the prime number theorem, that kind of eluded even great mathematicians like Gauss. And studying this problem of distribution of prime numbers led to all different types of branches of, of mathematics and developments. And it was several years after Gauss that the prime number theorem was actually first proved. You know, there's this kind of interesting development about in, in number theory that studying properties of, of integers and primes kind of led to more advanced techniques. And these advanced techniques and kind of furthered other branches of mathematics. And so there's kind of a, a split in the 19th century into to different branches of number theory. Now there's two main subfields of number theory called analytic and algebraic number theory. And big names like uh, Riemann and others used real analysis and complex analysis to, to study distributions of primes. And, and that kind of led to this branch of what we call analytic number theory. And then as advances in abstract algebra arose during the 19th century using algebraic techniques to solve number theory questions and properties of integers led to a branch of mathematics called algebraic number theory. And so the, the field of number theory is quite vast and extensive now and most of the modern you know number theory that's going on takes a real deep understanding of a lot of higher mathematics but we will and this semester, um, try to talk about a lot of the kind of the classical results of, of number theory. We might get into a little bit of the analytic number theory, discussing the distribution of primes and some other applications. Even, you know, even nowadays, there's there's uh, a great use of number theory in uh, in the real world. Perfect example is. The, the field of cryptography, of, of writing um, encoded messages, which we use every single day. There's number theories used to in computing, making operations faster. Like I said, in cryptography, all of our all of our encrypted data is, um, you know, or, or say two banks are transferring funds and they're trying to keep it secure. These all all these processes are based on on uh, number theory. And uh, so it's uh, it's amazing how the study of kind of just pure math, just studying numbers for the sake of studying numbers, um, led to such such vast applications in the real world. So as for our class, Math Fifty Three Hundred, we will we'll actually see a lot of these big names that I've mentioned, these big players in the history of of number theory, and see some of their their key results. We'll discuss things like things that the ancient Greeks knew about the factorization of integers into uh, prime numbers. We'll discuss you know pr the properties of prime numbers. We'll prove the fundamental theorem of arithmetic and study a lot of other properties of, of integers that you might even find if you researched Euclid elements. We'll talk about divisibility and some applications of divisibility such as uh, congruences later, but we will we will use uh, the Euclidean algorithm. We we'll talk about greatest common factors, and, and we'll solve those Diophantine equations for congruences. Congruences are pervasive in uh, in number theory, so we'll spend a lot of time solving congruences, defining congruences, solving congruences, linear, quadratic congruences. We'll uh, some theorems involving congruences like Fermat's theorem and Wilson's theorem. Um, even we'll see in cryptography how congruences pop up and all this other facts that we've uh, developed can be used to 
encrypt messages in, in a secure way. We'll talk about certain arithmetic functions, the Euler fee function, and probably talk about some other arithmetic functions that um, Gauss studied. Gauss also gave several proofs, actually, of the law of quadratic reciprocity. We'll use that to, to help us solve congruences. Then we'll talk about the prime counting function and the prime number theorem. The, uh, the proof of the prime number theorem is probably beyond the scope of this class, um, but we can, we can also talk about we can talk about the history of, of maybe of solving the prime number theorem and, and how it studies the distribution of prime numbers. So these are, these are just a few of the topics that we'll discuss throughout the semester. And hopefully by the end of the semester, we'll have a uh, good understanding of the basic ideas and techniques of number theory.